The Scarecrow's Wedding by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Betty O'Barley and Harry O'Hay were scarecrows. They scared lots of crows every day. Harry loved Betty, and Betty loved Harry. So Harry said, Betty, my beauty, let's marry. Let's have a wedding, the best wedding yet. A wedding that no one will ever forget. Betty agreed, so they hugged and they kissed. Then Betty said, Harry dear, let's make a list. Just as you say, answered Harry O'Hay. So they wrote down the things they would need on the day. A dress of white feathers, a necklace of shells, lots of pink flowers, two rings and some bells. Then Harry gave Betty O'Barley his arm and the scarecrow set off on a hunt round the farm. They hadn't gone far when they spotted some geese. Oh, geese, if you'll give us a feather apiece, you can come to our wedding. The best wedding yet. The wedding that no one will ever forget. Wow, wow, honked the geese, and they each gave a feather. A spider friend offered to sew them together. Hooray, said the scarecrows. They hugged and they kissed and they hurried back home and cross-dress off their list. Then Harry gave Betty O'Barley his arm, and they set off once more on their hunt round the farm. They hadn't gone far when some cows gathered round, and the bells round their necks made a wonderful sound. Ring-a-ding-ding, ring-a-ding-ding. O oh, cows, will you please come and make your bells ring for our wonderful wedding, the best wedding yet, the wedding that no one will ever forget. Yes, mooed the cows. We can tinkle our bells. Then a crab scuttled up with a necklace of shells. Some mice found two rings in a bin. They were certain the rings had belonged to an old farmhouse curtain. Hooray, said the scarecrows. They hugged and they kissed. Pink flowers are the only things left on our list. Then Harry said, Betty dear, I can find those. Why don't I pick some while you have a doze? Pink flowers, pink flowers, buzzed the big stripy bee. I can find the way I feel the pink flowers. Follow me. So the bee led the way and they travelled for hours till they came to a field full of pretty pink flowers. Harry stood thinking, I won't pick them yet. I need to find water to keep their stalks wet. Just follow me, croaked a lumpy old toad. There's a lovely wet pool at the top of this road. They climbed up the road. It was terribly steep. I'm tired, said the toad, so they stopped for a sleep. Early next morning they came to the pool. This water, said Harry, is beautifully cool, but now I need something to carry it in. A jug, or a vase, or a cup, or a tin. I think I can help, said a small, squirrely snail. I think I can show you to a very fine pail. So the snail and the scarecrow set off on their way. But the snail was so slow, it took more than a day. Betty was worried. What's happened to Harry? Where is the scarecrow who ain't planning to marry? The farmer came by with a frown on his face, and he made a new scarecrow to take Harry's place. Good day said the scarecrow. I'm a Reginald Drake. He took Betty's hand and he gave it a shake. Together, he told her, we make a fine pair. You're really quite pretty, apart from your hair. Then he jumped in the tractor and told her, hop in, I'm a really fast driver. Let's go for a spin. But Betty said, no, 
I must wait here for Harry. He is a scarecrow I'm going to marry. We're planning our wedding. The best wedding yet. The wedding that no one will ever forget. Reginald laughed. Ha <laughs> ha, you'll be waiting forever. Forget about Harry. I bet he's not clever. I must be the cleverest scarecrow alive. I can sing lots of songs. I can dance. I can drive. I'm dashing. I'm daring. I'm cool as can be. I can even blow smoke rings. Just watch me and see. And he took out a big fat cigar from a packet the farmer had foolishly left in his jacket. But smoking is bad for you, Betty exclaimed. Really, you ought to be feeling ashamed. Don't be a fusspot, said Reginald Rake. My smoke rings are staggering. Make no mistake. He struck up a light and tried hard to smoke, but straight away started to splutter and choke. What happened next was completely unplanned. The lighted cigar tumbled out of his hand. It fell to the ground and it started a fire. Betty screamed, help, as the flames flickered higher. But Reginald Rake said, I'd better be off. And he bounded away with a terrible cough. Then suddenly who should appear on the farm but Harry O'Hay with a pail on his arm. Betty, cried Harry, my own future wife. He poured on the water and saved Betty's life. Then they picked up the flowers, they hugged and they kissed. And they said, now that's everything crossed off our list. So Betty O'Barley and Harry O'Hay wed one another the very next day. And everyone, even the snail who was late, said, Don't they look happy? And don't they look great? This, they agreed, as they sprinkled confetti on Harry O'Hay and his beautiful Betty, is the best wedding ever, the best wedding yet, the wedding that no one will ever forget. The End